The next thing that we're doing in this video right here is installing our chip work module. That's one side done. Okay, now let's go ahead and go over to our B. One of our Yo, what up everybody? It's Stefan here from Mod to Fame and we are back with another video. That's right, man, you see it. We got the Porsche Panamera Turbo right behind us. In the previous video, we've been going through a series of mods for the car. The first thing that we did was catless downpipes and a BMC filter. We showed the results for that. The next thing that we did was take off the 22 inch wheels with rubber band tires and put on the factory wheels with Toyo 888 R's in the back and a standard summer tire in the front. I know it's all wheel drive, but most of my slip was coming from the rear. If the rear hooked up really good, the front just did a nice little extra pull. Most of the bias of the power goes to the back anyway. Therefore, the next thing that we're doing in this video right here is installing our chip work module. So this is actually gonna be a video on chipping a car, a turbo car, and seeing what difference it makes. And we're gonna show you the data about that Let's jump into it, let's go. All right guys, so here we are walking in my garage that is housing my Gen 1, which is a 970 is the chassis code, Panamera Turbo. This is a 4.8 liter turbo making 500 horsepower, 516 torque. I can assure you though, it's making more power than that now that we've done catless downpipes and a BMC filter we deleted the resonator. That probably didn't add any power. But what we're gonna be doing is installing this little guy that we just got. As a matter of fact, editors, go ahead and show them what we got. And the fun and games are over. <laughs> we about to install the chip work in this video right here. We're gonna install the chip work uh, engine management system on the Porsche Panamera Turbo. It's a Gen 1 Panamera Turbo that comes with 500 horsepower and 516 torque, and it does have Sport Chrono. So that gives it over boost, where periodically it peaks to like 14 PSI. We are going to install this. It says easy five minute install, plug and play system, won't flag your ECU, which is the main reason why we're looking at this option, won't void your warranty. Currently, our warranty is up, but a lot of you still have warranty. So I wanted to use this system to show the difference between a full tune and a piggyback tune. So we have to do the piggyback tune first, which we're about to do now. All right, let's see what we got. Hey, okay, okay. Nice little packaging. So this right here is the unit. This small little thing is the unit that we're gonna be putting in. Let's check it out. As soon as I can get it out the bag. Doing things one hand is not exactly the easiest, but there it is and I'm gonna show you how it's installed in a second. These are the instructions, where to plug everything. Here goes the wiring and the loom that's necessary to plug into the two sensors that it has to go into. And they gave us a lanyard and looks like some decals, which we're not gonna use because we run uh, the hush hush. So when I got my chip work, there weren't instructions in the box which I was a little surprised about. I was wrong when I said it was instructions. It was just saying to make sure that you put the connections tight, but it's okay because after one quick phone call, the guy sent me this, which has everything that we need to know. It's only two sensors that we gotta plug in, A and B, boost pressure and manifold pressure. Those are the only ones that we're adjusting for. So to get to that, we are going to now remove this guy right here. It just holds on with two little couplings right here, these two little holes thing. And we're gonna simply unplug this sensor. There we go, that was a simple unplug. And now let's locate that other sensor in the back. It's supposed to be on the driver's side. So let's locate that guy. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get my headlight. Give me a second. And then God said, let there be light. <laughs> these things come in super handy. It looks silly as hell but they come in really handy for dark spaces, like in the back over here where we need to find that, that manifold pressure sensor, which 
now that we have our handy dandy thing, we can see it's right there underneath this little hose right here. So we're gonna unplug that. Excuse the ashy hands. Oh, shit. it's hot. There we go. Now that's all, right? So we can now grab our chip work and bring that over and let's wire that up. All right, so there goes our chip work. What I need to do is kind of set our camera up in a way that you guys can see what I'm doing, but I have my hands free, so. And that should do it. Sensor A, the good thing about uh, the chip work units are they're labeled A and B. So we knew that A has to connect to this guy, right? So A connects over here. And the good thing is it already pre-gives you male and female. So you, you can't really mess it up, to be honest. There we go, that plugs in. These are specifically made, these clamps and clips are specifically made for the car. So kind of hard to mess it up, right? And now we're gonna plug in the other side, which is the male to your female. As a matter of fact, let me actually change this. I wanna go the other way. All right, so here we go. The reason why I wanna go that way is so that I can move it more freely. I wanna hide these wires, right? So they're not kinda, you know, just hanging out. And I wanna make sure I get it right. You feel me? So I'm gonna pass it under the plenum tubing. Right, because we're gonna have to go around this way to get to the B. Let's go ahead and install this back. Everything is color-coded. It looks exactly like factory to clamps. So you can't really mess it up. It's kind of dumb proof. It won't allow you to click the wrong thing into the wrong place, nor will it allow you to click it the wrong way. That's one side done. Boom. Now let's go ahead and go over to our B. What I'm more than likely gonna do is probably Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. Pass this under here. There we go. Come on. Come here, guys. And the good thing is, with these, the way the wiring is done, it does look kind of factory, to be honest with you. This looks like a factory loom that's coming through. So I'm gonna go up under the cover here. So it's not something that's like jumping out at you, right? It's it's like hidden, it's the name of the game for me. I wanna, I want everything to look as factory as possible. So I'm passing everything in a way that does that. I'll hide this later. Outside of me reaching my hands everywhere and figuring out where to hide the wiring, it's actually really simple. Hear that nice little satisfying snap? a good thing. That's what you want to hear, buddy. Now we're going to come along with this one and just do the same thing. You feel me? Again, passing it under here so there's nothing jumping out at you. Nothing that's like, ooh, what's that? Granted, what you're going to want to do is if you ever take your car in service, you're going to want to take that out. You don't want to take this off anyway. So There we go. And that's it. Our chip work unit is actually in. Damn. That is hella simple. Let's try to get this under here too. Alright guys, so change of plans. I'm not gonna hide this under here. The only one that I'm gonna hide under here is this part. I'm actually gonna put that somewhere else. Because the actual unit has to go. Uh, has to plug into here, right? This is just a dummy block off, so I have to open this and actually plug the unit up somewhere. So, the question is, Stefan, where would you like the unit to go? Now, I want the unit to go somewhere cool as possible, right? So that we don't have to worry. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna put the unit right there. Yep, so I'm gonna hide my unit right up under this this area right there. I don't really see anywhere else that I feel comfortable putting it. So that's what I'll put it for now. Tell me that's not clean. So this is my, the pipe that comes from the, the intake, air intake filter, and goes down to the intercoolers, right? So it's very hard plastic. So what I did was I just zip tied to that, stuck it between that. So that should sit still. 
I could do another one, but I don't really need it. But that's gonna be my setup. Pretty clean, right? All right, I'm gonna plug in my unit now. Then I'll be done. Let me put you guys back in the corner. Now I can just take this guy out by pulling this purple piece that lifts that out. Now we can go ahead and install into our chip work device. And that's it. We are now chipped. Simple as that. Another step that I'm doing while uh, installing the chip work, while I took the time to do that, install it, and put everything in a nice place, total install time, now that you have this video, it ain't gonna take you more than 20 minutes. It took me a little bit longer, more about figuring out where to put stuff. It didn't actually take me actually, actually that long. It might, it might've took me 20 minutes. It'll probably take you 10 now that you have this video. But anyway, uh, what I'm doing while I've been doing that, the key I put far away from the car because it, the car has to go through a relearn process. So we're about to go out for a drive. Now that the key has been away from the car, as part of the relearn process, something about the relation between the key and the car, the car doesn't quite shut all the way down, I don't know, but chip work suggests that you leave the key far enough away, out of range, so that the car can completely shut down. So that's what is done, and in a little bit, I'm gonna go wash my hands, and we're gonna go out for a test run. Come on. All right, guys, so, my initial impression is just driving around, like I'm driving around normal. It's in sport mode, so, but it feels like how it normally does in sport mode. Yeah, it feels completely normal like it usually does. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. The only thing that I do notice, usually when I'm just tootling around, making, if I go to accelerate a little bit and make a lane change, the boost usually reads about three or so, it usually goes up PSI wise to about maybe three, sometimes four if I partial throttle it. But what I'm noticing is that the boost is not showing, it's like going to one. And that makes a lot of sense considering how this thing works. What this thing does is it actually fools your ECU into thinking that it's not giving enough boost and then it sends more boost to compensate to make up the difference, right? So it would make sense that it would read incorrectly or it's not reading enough boost so that it fools the ECU and now it gives it more boost pressure. So it's pretty cool the way it does it, but we're gonna you know, do some testing in a little bit. All right, so what I purposely did, guys, I did all my testing runs before we go into the, cause this right here, I shot this the next day. And the reason why is because it was really dark, it was night. So I wanted to get my genuine reactions from doing the pulls. What you're about to see is a recap of what happened. But here's the key. I did not look at the footage. So I don't know what times I ran. I just know driving the car, yo, this shit felt fast fast i was like wow this feels like what i remember my hellcat feeling like when i got it stock of course all right let's jump into the numbers so here is my 60 to 130 run my fastest 60 to 130 run of the night check it out here it is go All right, so let's look at the data. Uh, you guys just saw it, I didn't see it yet. <laughs> Yo, 913? Wow, that's up a hill. Yo, real talk, look at the slope. Look at the slope, can y'all see that? The slope is 150. This is going up a hill. Oh my gosh, dog. The reason why I'm so hype, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, is because when we started doing this, I'm gonna go into my history real quick. My first 60 to 130 test that we ever did in this car, granted, okay, look, I had some stuff in the trunk. I had a little extra weight in the trunk. The, what this car did stock was 12.5. Here, I'll show you. That's what it did stock, right? And we just did a 9.13. 
We went from a 12.5 to a 9.1, 60 to 130. That is 3.0 seconds faster. Jesus. All right, all right, all right. So I know the quarter mile got to be faster. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, let's check 0 to 60. Let's see what our fastest 0 to 60 was last night. All right, look, I had to cut it short because that zero to 60 was part of my 60 to 130. So I cut it short because I don't want to give too much away, but I'm going to look at it right now to see what that zero to 60 was. Hold on. Boom! What? 3.4 seconds on the street? Dog, that's 3.4 seconds on a nine prep surface. You know what that means when we get to the drag strip, what this thing is going to do zero to 60? It's probably going to do like 3.1. God damn, that's crazy. Wow. All right, what was our, my fastest ever zero to 60 stock on a nine prep, also a nine prep surface, 3.99. So we went, we dropped half a second on a zero to 60. Damn. Granted that 399 was on 22s and rubber band tires. On stock wheels with good summer tires, that probably would be a 3.8. So figure 0.4 seconds difference, zero to 60. Dog. All right, now the numbers you guys have all been waiting for, I know, is what did we do in the quarter mile? I'm gonna go over to the quarter mile right now and I'm gonna show it to you guys first and then I'm gonna look at the result. All right, go check out the quarter mile now. Yo, I, all I can tell you is, I know y'all just saw the numbers. I didn't see them. That shit was running, bro. So I know it's fast. Just so you guys know, on a non-prep surface, the only 22 is the fastest I ever ran was a 12-1, sorry, stock, stock, 12-1. On a prepped surface, the car ran 11-9, 11-9-1 to be exact, is what it ran on a prep surface at 117 miles an hour, 117 point like one or three, something like that, something low, some low 117s. Let's see what it did in a quarter mile on a non-prep surface. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 11 why y'all didn't tell me 11 3 oh my gosh 11 3 on the street and look at a mile an hour at 120.84 that's almost 121 so from 117 to 121 how many mile an hour that's four mile an hour wow dog wow my fastest on a non-prep surface, mile an hour was 114. She just did 121 on a non-prep surface. All right, guys, uh, I'm kind of blown away right now. I'm kind of, give me a minute, I'll be right back. Yo, my guys, my guys, these are all the positives, right? I'm giving you all the positives so far of the mods that we've done. Um, so far of the mods that we've done, Catalyst Downpipe was the first. Y'all saw what it picked up. If you didn't, go back and watch the video where I say something about Catalyst Downpipes for turbo cars. Go back and look at that video or click this link right here. The next step is we took off the 22 inch wheels and put back factory wheels with Toyo AAA tires. And look what the difference was for that. Go look at that video. And then the last thing that we just did was add uh, the chip work piggyback tune. All the positives, all the positives since all the mods, right? All the mods, I didn't have any negatives, right? Besides Catless, every once in a while, if you stopped at a light with the windows down, you'll like smell what smells to be like oil or gas, mostly like gas burning every once in a while, but very rarely have I smelled anything. Going with the tires, the bigger tires and all that, I hate the way it looks. So the look is terrible. Ride is great. <laughs> And then, last but not least, going with the chip work, there are some downsides I've noticed. One is the way that the ch the uh, the chip works, no pun intended, what it's doing is fooling the factory ECU into thinking it's not giving enough boost. So it adds more boost to make up the difference. But what I'm noticing is because the PDK is tuned so closely with the engine ECU, it gets confused sometimes. And what I'm noticing is like 
um, sometimes abrupt shifts, uh, sometimes like these weird surges is happening. And I'm noticing the more that I drive, the more it seems like the factory ECUs are learning each other um, with the new uh, with the new boost that's being added, but it's still not perfectly smooth. But before I rush the judgment, I'm gonna give it some more time. So far, I've put about 50 miles. I wanna put another 50 miles before I rush the judgment. But for right now, it's kind of herky-jerky, I must say. Um, I'll show you guys in another 50 miles. If it keeps doing it, I'll, I'll, I'll report back more. My bad guys, the other camera died, so I had to get my, I had to get this camera. Anyway, besides the uncertainty of the, like the transmission trying to link up the ECU, trying to link up with the factory ECU, there have been no side effects. The check engine light came on. I'm not sure if that's related to the, to the O2 sensors or if that's related to the chip work. I have to read the codes and see, but which I'll get back to you guys on that one too. But for this video, man, oh man, I'm so excited. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do a little bit more driving and then I'll get back with y'all in a second. <laughs> Yo, I am so happy with the way that this car is performing. There was a learning period and there still is a learning period. But so far, the chip work has made a massive difference, man. I mean, you guys saw it um, half a second on the quarter mile, another, over full like two seconds over two seconds faster on a 60 to 130 that is massive the zero to 60 dropped by from 0.7 to 0.4 so that's 0.3 on a zero to 60 and this is all on non prep surface can you imagine when we go to the track my estimate when we take this car to the track is that it's going to run probably the way that it sits right now before we do our last mod that we're going to do in this series it's probably going to do an 11.2 just the way it sits that's super impressive our fastest stock was an 11.9 so we'll go to the, the track as soon as we can they keep closing it due to it being too cold the temperatures whenever they drop below like 45 they close the track for safety precautions but guys man dude how could you not be excited about that so far all we have done to this car is down pipes filters took the wheels off and a piggyback tune not even a full tune from chip work so sheesh man sheesh 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 exciting times man listen guys if you like this video though you know what to do like subscribe share hit that notification bell and if you like this one chances are you're gonna like a lot more videos that we do so my suggestion is please man tell a friend Come back again and subscribe. Trust me, we're not going to disappoint. Anyway, it's your boy Stefan here from Mod to Fame. And with a little bit more testing to do in the Porsche Panamera Turbo, we out, we out.